Your disciples of Jesus, he is risen. Hallelujah. Today is our last Sunday celebrating the Easter season 2021. It is the Sunday when we can say that he is risen, he has ascended to his glory, and that he is seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. And for this reason, the last verses of the Bible say, Surely I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Life in the present, of course, is not without struggles. Jesus doesn't ask God to take his disciples out of the world or even to protect them from all struggles. His prayer is not a prosperity gospel prayer for believers in the present to avoid problems. His words rather seem to point to a more complicated relationship between God and the world. One in which joy in God may still lead to struggle in the world. In fact, during the period in which the New Testament was composed, this was pretty much guaranteed. Christians of the first generation understood very well how challenging it was to live their faith under the permanent attack and persecution by Romans and Jews at the same time. So the prayer shows Jesus interceding for his disciples because they are a vulnerable community of believers. But this same vulnerable community of believers are receiving now from Jesus the mission to be his presence in the world and continue to the preaching of the gospel after his ascension to the Father. This is a very interesting description. The church, a very vulnerable small community, is the recipient of the graces of the Spirit to continue Jesus' ministry. God doesn't choose the powerful and the influent and affluent of the world to be in charge of the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. God chooses the most vulnerable and almost insignificant to continue the expanded expansion of God's kingdom. This is why the church is a miracle, because the church was conceived as a vulnerable community that didn't have legions and crosses to conquer and execute its enemies. It was the opposite. The church had to suffer persecution and torture. The church was always trying to survive the violence of the legions and the certain death on a cross. But the miracle happened. The church, small, vulnerable, and insignificant, conquered the empire with the preaching of the gospel, with the power of the Spirit, with the blessing and protection of Jesus' prayer for care. A prayer asking God to keep the church always clean and faithful as a community that is consecrated to the service of God and the preaching of the gospel through the words and deeds. Jesus doesn't want his church to remove herself from the world. He doesn't want his disciples to run away from the world. The prayer of Jesus is that they remain in the world as it, a sanctifying body that preserves the world from self-destruction and manifests the presence of God daily through the ministry of the gospel. So the Christian faith or faith is not a faith that promotes escapism from the world, what in Latin we call a fuga mundi. The Christian faith is a missionary faith that comes in the middle of a hostile territory, ready to preach the gospel and turns to God the hearts of the enemies of the gospel. Now people can ask, well, Jesus ascended to heaven. What do you have in his place? The answer is clear. We have one another. We have the living body of Christ, the church, we have the family of faith. We, have, we are part of the same family and we have the same spirit, the same mind, the mind of Christ. We have one another because we are one in Christ. That's what we have. So the ascension doesn't mean that Jesus disappeared from the world. The ascension means the opposite. The ascension means that he literally makes himself present through his brothers and sisters that are here and now in the world, living his teachings and sharing them with the people that don't know the gospel. So Jesus made space for us in the world. He created a space for us to manifest himself and reveal the love of the Father for him and for the world. Where is Christ now? Christ is at the right hand of the Father. Where is the right hand of the Father? 
Luther answered, the right hand of the Father is everywhere the Father is. And God is omnipresent. God's right hand is everywhere. That is why we can say that Jesus didn't abandon the church. Jesus commissioned the church to continue his presence in the world. The church is the expression of the presence of the Lord in the world and the sacraments. The church is where Jesus can be found and worshipped. But the church is not a place. The church is a community. This is why the church is always present and why Jesus is always present. Because the church is always open. Because the people that are the church are alive 24-7. We are alive and the church is alive. We walk and the church walks. We serve and the church serves. We pray and the church prays. We love and the church loves. As the church is the body of Christ, then when we do all these things as Jesus himself, that is Jesus who is doing all these things, bringing himself as the Son of God and the risen one to the life of every human being that finds the church when he finds us doing the ministry that we are commissioned to do. So we have received the promise that God is always acting in our lives sanctifying us and making us faithful to the truth. Our sanctification and our faithfulness are guaranteed not because of our own efforts, but because of the prayer of Jesus that is asking the Father to keep us holy and faithful to the truth. These are very liberating words, my brothers and sisters, because they promise to continue being holy and faithful thanks to the power of God that is acting in us through the Holy Spirit. We can walk freely and trustfully, rest on the promises of God, because our faithfulness and holiness are the work of God. They are the marks of the fulfillment of the prayer of the Lord over his church, asking God that we may now be his present and become holy and faithful as he is. Do not dismay. Do not feel abandoned. Do not feel that the struggle is impossible to win because we have already won thanks to jesus that pray to the father and can be in us acting powerfully in the same way that he acted powerfully through his ministry two thousand years ago so the lord is alive the lord is present and his presence brings holiness and faithfulness to the truth in our life and ministry let us celebrate this miracle with joy and the assurance that the victory is ours because he lives he ascended and he will come back one day. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.